Hey everybody, welcome to Raising a Well-Mannered Puppy Workshop. I am Sylvia Kozerzak and I'm going to be your instructor for this webinar. I am a certified pet dog trainer and certified dog behavior consultant. So I have many years of experience to bring to you. And um, this workshop is being streamed directly into your group. And so you have this here to watch later. Um, this is not live. So um, if you do have any questions, because it is being streamed uh, into a particular group, you can always come back to my Walkabout Canine Consulting Facebook, um, not the private group, but the um, my business page. If you have any questions or comments, um, I'm happy to answer that for you. This workshop is for humans with or about to get a puppy, or if you know somebody that has a puppy. Um, so welcome. And um, some puppies arrive in our arms ready and excited to take on the challenges um, and others need a little bit more time. So we do want to be mindful and careful um, about the attention so that our puppies do feel safe to explore and learn new things. There's a variety of reasons why we're getting our dogs. It could be just for a companion, a walking buddy, um, maybe you want to get into dog sports. And um, some of us have hunting dogs or gun dogs, um, a family pet. If we, you know, if we have kids and we think they are old enough and ready to um, have the enjoyment of a puppy and a dog, as well as um, a therapy dog for some of us, um, we do visitations. Some of us have um, professional um practices where we have a therapy dog and service animal, which there is a very distinct um, uh, service animals that actually do a job for us that we cannot do. Um, so, you know, what's your puppy vision? So this is just an overview of the topics that we're going to talk about, uh, our puppy essentials, what shapes behavior, puppy developmental stages, puppy schedules and routines, mental and physical exercise strategies, um, what safe and positive socialization and exposure really are, and we'll give you... Um, uh, there is a puppy socialization checklist and how we can use management to prevent unwanted behaviors. Um, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, they say, and it truly is when we're using management. And um, if there's anything else, just let us know what we can do to help. So some puppy essentials um, that you will need to consider when you're bringing your puppy home. Um, you do want to make sure that you are talking, your breeder does know a lot about puppy raising and is willing to talk to you in general, in detail. Sometimes um, puppy uh, breeders will have other professionals that work with them that can help you um, and is able to help you through those early days. Um, what is important is that you do have a very safe space for your puppy when you bring them home. They're not ready to um, be able to navigate our entire homes yet. So we want to use uh, management tools like X-Pens, crates, um, leashes, that sort of thing. It's nice to have multiple crates if you can. And um, you want to have your puppy's um, food. A lot of breeders will send home the food that they were eating. You're always um, able to change that if you like. And as well as training treats. So that's nice to have. You want to make sure that you have an acceptable potty station and you need to decide what that is going to be. Um, best course of action is to, um, because we are shaping in the early days, if you want your um, puppy going to the washroom outside, you want to start outside as soon as possible, picking um, a spot outside. You want to make sure you have a good enzyme cleaner in case there are some accidents so that gets cleaned up properly and there's no smells left behind. So your puppy doesn't want to um, 
go back to that spot. Um, grooming supplies, depending on the type of puppy we have and um, having a, at least a comb and a slicker brush. Uh, if you have a short coated dog, you might want to look at something like a zoom groom, um, perhaps nail clippers if you're going to do that yourself and toys and chews. Um, so when I talk about toys, um, you know, you see these little balls here, but you also want to have some interactive to uh, puzzles and of course, safe toys, um, that are okay when your puppy is alone, soft toys for comfort, chews for soothing, teething pain, and just a very gentle, um, tug toy. So, um, we do want to be careful with all those things. I always suggest any new item you that you give to your puppy that you always supervise and watch how they interact with those items because every dog um, interacts differently. So what shapes behavior? Um, so there's a lot of things that do. Genetics, um, uh, learning. So learning is training and um, Dogs learn in two different ways, either by association, which is uh, emotional, or by consequence is doing. So action um, is has a consequence. Um, association emotion is, um, you know, our puppy experiences something and there is an emotion that's attached to it. So these are a couple of ways that um, dogs will learn and see our world. So it's essentially safe versus dangerous and um, what works and what doesn't work. Okay. Um, so for example, if they learn that it works for them to bark at you and you look over and walk over to the pen, your puppy will learn, wow, that worked really well. I'm going to do the same thing. And same with your new puppy. If they jumping on you to get your attention um, and you ignore that, letting your puppy know, well, that's not going to work for me, um, gives you an opportunity, your puppy an opportunity to learn what works and what doesn't work. Okay. And you do want to be careful about the bad stuff. So um, there is always a fallout when it comes to the bad stuff. So our puppies are going to be going through a lot of different stages. By the time you get them, they've already gone through some stages. Um, and we are going to talk about the socialization stage where a puppy is more likely um, going to try things out and decide if it works or if it doesn't. And then of course we do have the juvenile stage, which is the later stage. And that is something that you um, want to be aware of. So let us know how old your puppy is. Um, so we, um, when we're bringing our puppies home, they're usually in the, um, the socialization phase, which is the, um, we're not taking them home at three weeks, but um, the socialization period is usually up to about 12 weeks. It is approximately, um, depending on your breed. And this is one of the big critical periods of development where a dog learns to communicate. And then after that, they go into their juvenile phase. Um, and that begins at the end of the socialization period. So at 12 weeks, and you will see some differences in how your um, puppy behaves and acts. And then you know, once they reach sexual maturity, that's when they become a team and an adolescent. And um, so those coincide and then you start seeing different behaviors as well. So this is important to our puppy schedule and routine. So by setting up a schedule, as soon as your puppy comes home, um, it sets you up for success. And it also creates a dog who um, understands what's going to happen and there's less frustration and it, your puppy becomes a well-adjusted dog. It's worth putting in the time and effort in the beginning, um, and not waiting until your dog is older or bigger, um, and has started on some behaviors that you don't want to grow. Okay. So we will be looking at these three, these three, these five different topics 
And um, so our puppy schedule example for potty is you want to make sure that you are going through the same door. Um, you want to make sure that your, um, your potty spot is going to be the same and you want to let them know, go potty. You can call it whatever makes sense for you. Some owners say get busy. Some people say go potty. I personally use go peepees and go poopoos and my dogs do understand all of them have always understand the difference. Um, so you want to continually repeat, um, the schedule. You do want to give them an opportunity for some human play, um, so that we help build the bond and relationship, um, a little bit of fetch and tug. You want to be careful about how animated your puppy gets. Um, they should always be, um, you know, a nice behavior. You don't want them getting over, um, stimulated and always positive exposure um, to whatever is new for them. Um, you want to make sure that they are learning. So feeding by hand for all behaviors that you like is awesome. Using an interactive feeder um, is good, like the Kong toys, uh, West Paw Topples is great. And, you know, using um, food for training session is fabulous because your puppies love to work for their food. And we're also going to use um, hand feeding for positive exposure experiences and socialization. Um, and like I say, you want to um, also get your puppy into the habit of also going to potty after um, any kind of physical exercise and training exercise happens because um, often activity um, will stimulate their bladder or their bowels. So they want, you want them to understand um, that they will have an opportunity to go potty after those activities um, so that your puppy doesn't go off and um, go to the bathroom after you do these things. And then putting them back to um, some alone time. So our puppies do need to learn um, how to um, be alone because, you know, if we work outside the home or we need to go shopping anything like that. We want our puppies to learn that it's okay. And this is when we can give them something special like a Kong or a Chew. Um, and then, you know, you want to start getting into the habit of um, doing this, putting the Kongs in the crate before you go away. And then you can start um, adding the alone time and going away and adding um, short sessions. So 15 minutes at a time. Um, you know, you do want to supervise your puppy whenever they are awake and they're not in their pen or crate. Um, puppies are fast and they're exploring and they're curious and they're going to be going everywhere. Um, so, you know, it is nice to use baby gates to make room smaller or having just a long uh, cord that they can drag and um, you want all eyes on them. They're like little toddlers. So... Like I mentioned, you do want to be able to go through the same door um, and say, go potty. And then you want to reward your puppy as soon as they are done. Okay. Um, management is critical. So this helps us set up um, for success with our puppies. And you want to bring your puppy to the station. If they're still really small, don't expect them to be able to walk all that way. You want to happily pick them up um, and let them know you're picking them up so that they don't get startled. Um, and you want to think about that really, really young puppies um, will need to go to the toilet every 30 minutes or so. Sometimes it's even more often if they've been really active um, during play sessions. So you will have to see um, sometimes the smaller breed dogs, because the bladders are smaller, you want to think about that. And really neurologically, um, puppies under the age of 12 weeks are not able to um, hold their bladder um, on their own. So you do um, make sure you know where the toilet station is going to be. 
um, that it is secure and it's away from distractions. So your puppy doesn't get distracted. Um, and also, you know, you want to make sure that whatever service you want your puppy to be going on, you want to start that right away. Okay. Um, also, you know, keeping pup, uh, potty stations away from uh, uh, child play areas. If you have a family is also good. That way you can keep, um, you know, one part of your yard clean and the other yard is for potty. So, you know, setting up those zones is really nice. And um, just because of the routine becomes, um, you know, the puppy understands that and there's less stress. Okay. You can store your treat treats at the door so you have them ready to take with you. Um, you can also uh, make sure that you take um, their favorite toy with you. Um, if you don't have your own yard, you want to make sure you take your poop bags right away. And um, yeah, and then also, you know, be ready to wipe your puppy's paws when they come back in the house. Okay. You do want to make sure that um, you know, your puppy is taken out often in the beginning. Sometimes you do have to set an alarm or if your puppy is waking you up, um, do make sure that um, they go out as soon as they wake up from a nap, eat something, drink after training or you're playing. Um, and then throughout the night, um, you may find that you do have to get up and take your puppy out to the bathroom. You don't want them stressing out um, if nobody is hearing their needs. So um, introducing your puppy to the world in a positive way while they're young is crucial for a happy, well-rounded adult dog in the future. Lack of socialization during the key imprinting period um, can lead to a higher chance of behavioral issues. It's not a guarantee, um, but it does prevent behavior issues when your puppy becomes an adult. Um, so this means that you want to be careful uh, and very thoughtful about expanding their experiences and making sure they are, um, these experiences are viewed by your dog uh, to be positive. Okay, so between the ages of 7 and 16 weeks, puppies are in their key socialization period. During this time, they are building their blueprint of the world and often experience new things with curiosity. Older than this, um, socialization is still possible, but puppies be, may be more susceptible, more suspicious um, of novelty. So you want to remember to tie in the end goal for each individual puppy um, in regards to what they are going to be doing for you. So important is to um, interact with, you know, watching dogs. They don't necessarily have to play with dogs, watching animals, watching people, watching children, um, ex experiencing different surfaces, sounds, sights, smells, sensations, touch, handling, and grooming. Um, and everything your dog is ever to like um, you want it to be, um, positive exposure and think about, you know, what your puppy's life is going to entail, you know, um, are you going to travel with them? So are there things there that you need them to become, um, familiar with? Okay. So this is, um, the socialization checklist and, there's a lot of things on here. There's a lot of things that you can do at home. We can play sounds while at a very low, um, it doesn't have to be loud. So it's not, we don't want to be startling puppies or making them super aware. Um, we, and their hearing is pretty good. Um, we can just play different sounds while they're doing something nice and calm, like chewing on something. Um, we can use our iPads for some visual things if we don't have an opportunity. There's a lot of ways to um, be able to socialize our puppy, even if they're not fully vaccinated yet. We can carry them, we can put them in strollers, we can put them in carts. Um, so there's a lot of clever ways to be able to do this. 
Um, you also want to be careful, like when you are playing, so exercise and play, um, human play, fetch, tug. Um, so you want to watch their body language and, um, make sure you are understanding what you're seeing. Okay. And you want to have fun and keep the rules to a minimum when you have a puppy. Um, and you know, you want it to be a bonding experience. So alone time. So when your puppy first arrives in your home, it's natural for them to want to be close by. So dogs are social creatures and um, they grew up in a pack. Um, hopefully where you got your puppy, they've had some experiences about being away from their puppy. Um, but you want to te start teaching your puppy it's okay to be alone. Um, and this is something that you need to teach. So using a Kong, even tying it to the corner of a room or um, the your puppy's crate is a great way. Um, using your puppy's food to um, feed in their exercise pen, their X pen or their crate and be able to walk away. You can scatter some treats on the ground and walk to the bathroom and shut the door. So you, um, you know, puppies will yelp and that's what they do use, <laughs> um, naturally, um, for their mom to come and find them so that you will find that they do that for you as well. Um, we don't want to push them into that phase where they have to yelp. Um, we want to do it very slowly, incrementally. Um, and that's, you know, how we're going to use the gate the baby gates, um, separate rooms, X pens, and um, safe places for your puppy to be alone in very short periods and giving them something um, very soothing to do. You do want to become um, uh, aware and learn body language. So there is something called calming signals, and this is your um, dog's way of communicating. So some examples of calming signals, and they can indicate different um, things, but often you will see them saying, I'm a little stressed out. Can we go now? Um, they also may be just trying to diffuse. Um, so you'll see some lip licking, shake offs, uh, paw lift, uh, stretching, looking away, pacing, sniffing, scratching, big, big yawns, um, blinking, um, now soft blinking sometimes is showing that they are, um, calm, lowering the tail, uh, even sneezing. Okay. So these are some signals, um, that lets you know that whatever is happening, your puppy is, is uncomfortable with. Okay. And when it comes to understanding our puppies, it's really important that we learn to interpret it, interpret um, the rich tapestry of visual signals our pup puppies display, depending on how they're feeling. They can't speak. They don't have human language. Um, so we need to learn how to interpret and watch for these signals that they're giving us so that we can keep them safe and happy. Um, so in this video, you're going to see a selection of body language of signals, and it's important to look at your puppy as a whole, rather just on one specific aspect, as no single behavior is a perfect barometer of how they're feeling. So a lot of people focus on the tail, and that can be misleading if you're not looking at everything else. Signs that your puppy is happy and relaxed, they're going to have an open mouth, lolling tongue. Um, loose body language, a lot of curves, a lot of wiggling, um, relaxed body movements, loose tail wag might be saying, um, facial expressions and muscles are relaxed and their ears are really neutral. Um, when they are interacting with other dogs, you do want to look for a lot of curved approaches towards others um, where they meet nose to bottom. And that is normal greeting for a dog is nose to the butt. You should also see a lot of play roles reversing often with a lot of switching back and forth, um, who is chasing and then being chased, 
play bows. So that is a lot of happy and good language. If your puppy is stressed or worried, um, they will show very different body language. And then you might start seeing yawning and lip licking, whale eye, where you see a little bit of white um, in your dog's eyes as they turn their head away and they keep looking at the thing that's worrying them. And they may turn their head or body away and, or lift their paws. They might start scratching, um, panting, lowering their body posture. Um, they might even tuck their tail um, or even right under their body, um, close their mouth and holding it, holding their breath. So you might see a really tight mouth um, and you might see a tense um, uh, on their forehead. For some breeds, you can even um, see a little bit of a furrow on your um, dog's head, depending if they have a lot of um, uh, hair on their body. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so of course you're not going to see all of those signals all at once. But if your puppy is showing um, several at a time, then it's time for you to help them feel safe again. Um, increasing distance is always the best course of action between them and what is ever causing concern um, because they are unsure. And you want to give them time to process and work through things at their own pace. Okay. And... Um, So management um, equals problem prevention. So if we want to, um, um, you know, avoid pulling on leash, then we need to teach leash walking. If we want to avoid potty accidents, we need to use our crates and X-pens, baby gates, um, and um, prevent our puppies from doing things that um, we don't want them to do. So if we don't want them jumping, we need to teach them what we want them to do instead. If our puppy is biting, then we need to give them something to chew on and also look at if they're getting enough rest. Um, so if they're pulling on leash, we want to teach um, leash walking. Separation anxiety, this is when we want to um, teach our puppies alone time, incrementally when they're really young. Um, stealing things, this is where we want to, again, use our management, um, X-pens, crates, teaching a, uh, a settle station, okay? Um, and potty accidents, again, this is where management is going to help us um, avoid um, having the accident accidents and making sure we have our, our um, prevention in place so that we can um, take our puppy to the right place and that they don't have access in our house to go to um, go in the wrong spot. Okay, so a lot of these problem behaviors can be prevented with early training and um, intervention. Okay, so you always want to think, what do you want your puppy to do instead of jumping? What do you want your dog to puppy? Because puppy biting is a natural thing. That's how they're exploring their world. Um, as they're teething, they need to do that. So how can we get them um, the appropriate outlets for that? Um, you know, do we need a food bowl? We can use so much of their kibble for learning um, where they don't necessarily have to have all their calories out of the food bowl. And if you have a little dog, it might even, you can even ditch the bowl. Okay. So managing situations rather than, um, you know, trying to, um, sort of firefight if behavior problems are starting. So management, um, you know, between dogs and kids is imperative. This is something that I see um, in 30 years of working in um, the pet industry. So management is imperative, okay? And, you know, as our puppies grow, as our children grow, as our children learn, as our puppy grow, 
learns, you can slowly start uh, removing management. Management isn't forever, but it is imperative in first steps in training. Um, and this is something that I do see a lot. If you don't want your puppy jump, um, jumping up on your toddler, you do need to use management. They're both toddlers at the same time. And um, yeah, so management is going to help. Um, you want to avoid your puppy biting your toddler um, or your children. Um, and some children get afraid if our puppy is biting them too much. So there's no problem um, using your um, X pens or baby gates. Um, so please do. You don't want your puppy learning um, behaviors that you don't want repeated because you want to remember behavior is rehearsed. So they are learning to do this. So um, you absolutely never want to use a crate for punishment or a timeout. But however, we do want to create a safe space. Um, it's a way for a puppy to be in an area and prevent them from doing something they shouldn't do. It also keeps them safe. So they're not chewing on things that might be dangerous for them. And they are not rehearsing behavior that you don't want. So once they start chewing on a favorite item, like a um, maybe a chair leg, and they like it and it feels good, they'll want to go back to that all the time. Okay, so create that safe space and um, you want to make sure they know where they're going to be going potty. You want them to understand that um, by setting up your routines that they will not get stressed. They understand that you will be taking them um, to uh, out to these spots. Okay. Um, it's always a good plan to crate train your puppy because you never know um, when they go for surgery. If you plan on spaying and neutering, they are going to go into a crate and you don't want them to be have the added stress of that. So um, and even if you don't plan on using a crate for your puppy's whole life, it's always um, great for management and um, it's a great Place to teach our, our puppies where their bedroom is. Um, like I say, you know, you never know if you have to board your puppy, take them to the vet. Um, if we ever have um, any kind of emergency, um, your puppy is going to have to go in a crate. Um, crates are great for travel in the car. It keeps our uh, dog safe in there as well and stops them from getting overstimulated. And um, perhaps you go on vacation and you take your dog with you. Some hotels say, yep, you can bring your puppy in or your dog in, but they do have to be in a crate. Um, and again, never for punishment. But if your puppy needs a rest, then that's where they go. But they always, um, you know, you always put them in their crates for, um, you know, with something that is positive and for something for them to chew on. And, you know, um, if they're getting overactive, um, they're likely due for a nap. So it's time for them to go into the crate. So there are some um, great ways to teach our puppies how to love their crate um, as a safe space. And, you know, imagine if your puppy love their crate and they're willing to go into it voluntarily from anywhere. This is what we want. So you want them to get near the crate and reinforce them. You want them to get in the crate and reinforce them. You don't want to push them in. Okay. And then you just keep building duration for them staying in the crate by feeding them. And then you might then close the door and then open the door. And then you might close the door and add a little bit of duration. Um, and every step of the way, your puppy should be happy and calm um, when they're in the crate and, you know, you can start adding a little bit of duration and then you can start adding a little bit of distance. And when I say distance, you might just be moving a few feet away um, and then coming back. And, you know, eventually you want to get to the point where you are out of sight um, and then um, again, coming back quickly and then adding in duration of you being out of sight. 
So teaching some basic skills um, is awesome if we start in puppyhood. So this is going to take us through um, our puppyhood, our adolescent period, if we start now. Your dog doesn't necessarily need to learn um, a large amount of tricks or anything or how to heal perfectly, um, but you want them to know the fundamentals. Um, some owners go on to teach them even more, but a lot of owners get away with teaching the bare minimums and that's okay. The most important thing is to motivate your puppy to want to have the desire to, um, you know, to be at your side. Um, you want them to learn how to take food. Um, you want them to learn to follow you. Um, hand targeting is a really great fundamental exercise to teach our puppies because it just, it basically teaches them to, that hands are great. Um, follow the hand. So it's a great way to lead them onto things, off of things. Um, we can even uh, turn that into a recall. And you always want to use management or teach what you want your puppy to do instead. Um, capturing behaviors on their own is awesome. So if your puppy is laying down nice and quiet, you can capture that and reinforce that behavior. Um, you know, if you're using a clicker, you want to condition the clicker um, to be something good. Uh, you can also use a verbal mark instead. Okay. So yeah, so steps for success, like I say, management isn't always forever, but it is for sure the very first steps in training. Um, you know, you want to establish management. Um, you want to establish a routine. You want to create trust and you want to motivate your puppy so that they will or that you can teach them behaviors and then also put them on cue. So it's nice to teach behaviors without a cue at first. And those are awesome because when our puppies start offering those behaviors, we can still reinforce them. And um, those behaviors really come strong. And then we can start putting them on cue. So we have a way to communicate with our puppy. So the other thing that you want to think about is um, using enrichment activities to keep our puppies busy, um, essentially giving them a job. Our dogs, or actually wolves evolved as dogs because they started hanging around our campsites and they thought it was a good deal because they would scavenge off of things that we had outside our campsites, which usually food, garbage, whatever. Um, so it is part of our dog's natural instinct and getting them to work for their um, food just satisfies them greatly. The other big benefit is it has and it is calming. Um, so because they've had to use either their mouth with chewing or licking, which is very calming, or they've had to figure out how to get the treats um, using their... Um, uh, using their brains or using their nose, um, which is then very um, fatiguing for them. So then they're, um, it keeps them quiet, calm, satisfied. Okay. So I do like to challenge um, puppy owners, even dog owners, regardless of who I'm working with, that they give their dogs three different enrichment activities each day. And the more that you can change that up on a daily basis, um, the more your puppy is going to enjoy that. You know, variety is a spice of life. So sometimes puppies or dogs can get bored with that. And by varying those items, um, you will keep them more engaged with those different activities. Okay. So pretty much anything that will make your dog use their mouths or nose, um, and you know, it gives your dog or puppy the nat their natural ability to find and scavenge their food and, um, also scent related, app, um, items. So if you have any questions that I can answer for you, 
um, be more than happy to do that. You can email me at walkaboutk9 at aol.com or you can um, check out my website. There are a few free resources on there as well. And you can contact me through um, my website as well. So it's www.walkaboutk9consulting.com. And if you're interested, I do have a um, little gift for you for listening to this webinar. And if you contact me, I will send you my puppy socialization ebook. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, and as I said, if there's any questions or answer, please do not hesitate to reach out. I am always happy to help owners get set up. I have programs to help you if you want further learning and um, happy training.